How's it going, folks? I'm Matthew. This is the Morris Cars, and today we're going to be taking a look at a little piece of CDH history. That's right. Today we are looking at Bryant's Pile of Broken, uh, arguably the first CDH deck. There's a little bit of debate on that, even from Bryant himself. Absolutely a piece of CDH history and uh, one of the earliest bits of this format that we can really take a look at and that we have like concrete list for that we can look at today. If you enjoyed this video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing. Let me know what you like about it. Let me know what you'd like to see next. I would not mind doing a little bit of a series here where we look at old decks throughout the history of this format. Sounds like a lot of fun. And consider supporting me on Patreon like these amazing patrons did to get access to early videos and perks like patron submitted questions for the podcast as well as submitting your deck list to be featured on our weekly tournament report videos. With all that being said, let's hop into it. Looking to run a great CDH event? Having hosted over 100 successful tournaments, Eminence Gaming has your back with Command Tower. With its intuitive tournament manager dashboard, you can handle everything from deck list submission to player management in just a few clicks. Then all players need to do is scan a generated QR code to have access to your full tournament bracket. Put your players first with seamless pairing software and real-time access to standings. Take the guesswork out of tournaments. Give Command Tower a try for your next event. First, we're gonna need a little bit of context, what we're looking at here. This is a list from 2008, pretty far removed from the uh, stuff that we might be used to seeing. So very old list. This only info we have here is that the deck is broken to the point that people don't wanna play with me anymore. It's basically like playing 100 card pitch long, which is kind of like a, a storm list of the time. Our commander will take a look at. And it's important to note the ban list in 2008 is very different from what it is nowadays, of course. It, there's a lot of stuff missing here that would be quickly added to the list. Our commander is Drowlnu Lich Lord. One of the big things about Magic in 2008 is this is pre-commander product. This is before every set had 50 legendaries and all of them actually do something and they're busted and there's a million five color ones like at the time and there there were other decks that Bryant played against that were also competitively minded and were trying to you know win and break this format there really weren't busted commanders we'd get we'd have Zer, um and that's one we'll probably look at later but you're kind of just picking something that's in your colors that might be able to do you some good at some point because there's it's just it's not here yet Drone and Lich Lord basically allows us to just have a way to buy back to refire it, it's we're here for that tap ability. We, we see the, I mean, massive downside on this commander. Like this, this thing is not very great, but kind of like a cast effect where we can give something flashback and play it again. So there's definitely some utility there, but even like the primer says, we're not looking to cast this thing. Our creature package, very slim. You have to think about the fact that uh, a lot of the good ways to like win the game, there was no Thassa's Oracle. We can't be doing that. There's, we don't need clones because there's no good creatures yet because it's 2008. Cloud of Fairies lets you do combo stuff. We're looking to do very traditional stormy things here. A lot of what you might think of as storm cards from like Legacy, especially of the time or type 1.5, those sort of older formats. Uh, 60 card stuff. We're bringing that in here. Dark Confidant, the draw engine. Ethereum Sculptor. This is a combo piece that's also, you know, just acceleration. Same with Nightscape Familiar. Trinket Mage, go get some good stuff that we've got. Magus of the Future. So future side effect. That is one of the ways that we can win here. Hide Spout Tyrant. This is the only one that's still kind of CDH viable and that's only in like Dark with Rest. I guess you could probably get away with Dark Confidant. Maybe some Trinket Mages. There's not a, not a lot of this that's, that's around. Big notable card that's legal in 2008 is Tinker. Briefly, it, it gets banned not long after this. Tinker is one of the most powerful magic cards, period. It's got a much more powerful with a printing of something like Bolus of Citadel, but it's a card that only gets better over time. Uh, yeah, so this lets us just tutor for any artifact as long as we have one, sacrifice it and put it into play. Again, though, there's no Citadel here, so we can't get something quite that crazy. Duress and Thought Seize. These are... These are very much like 60 card interaction. Um, but we did see in my God of Commander video that uh, some players have gone back to these sort of things and very grindy metas to just have any sort of ability to compete in the uh, super draw engine meta. So we see cards like Ponder, which would kind of just fall out of favor in CDH. Knights, was, this is not one you see too often. We, we have so many better ways to draw cards here. Mana Severance, I'm not familiar with this one. Search library for any number of land cards removed from the game. Okay, so this is gonna line up. One just gives us a lot of gas, but this is going to combo with, spoiler alert, uh, a card here like Goblin Charbelcher, make it really easy to kill an opponent. We have reshape, so lots of ways to tutor four different artifacts, um, and then ways to refill our hands. We've got Time Twister, Windfall, and Time Spiral as ways to refill our hand, and we have a couple synergies with Time Spiral as well. OG Storm Payoffs, Yagamas Will, no Breach yet, so this is the best way to do this kind of thing. Tenders of Agony, 
mind's desire. So just actually looking to purely storm off here and kill people with like tendrils of agony. Like that, that is one of our main win cons. Um, we see more cantrips like brainstorm, which for the time probably actually were worth playing, but nowadays not so much. I'm curious to look at the interaction package. We don't have things, well, some things that just straight up aren't printed, like mental misstep didn't exist. I'm not sure if you would have ran misstep back then, because I don't know if the meta was quite developed for that, but you probably would. I mean, there's it's a dark ritual vamp too. Like a lot of the broken cards are still broken. So high tide, we're doing that. We're only two colors, so it's not too tough. And then again, this really can break open with things like time spiral. Any of our ways to untap our lands. And again, we have another really powerful uh, land untapping payoff as we get further down. A good selection of like some of the best Interaction, Disrupting Shoals is another card we see like in the Japanese meta. Lemdul's Vault, still pretty powerful setting you up. Mana Drain, you're only in two colors. And again, it's important to keep in mind, the format isn't quite as established and it's not really that fast also. Like your consistency is a little bit lower and just like the most busted stuff just hasn't been printed yet. Granic Search, more Storm Payoff, Intuition, and Gifts and Given, which was not banned at the time. Looking at the list and listening to what Bryant has said about the deck, this is basically, it was just played as there wasn't really like a super established pile that everyone got with Gifts and given it was basically like tutor for four broken cards you're gonna give me two broken cards i might be able to replay them you know with like a yog will or something meditate's a really interesting one this is three mana draw four if you're already storm and you're doing the thing you have to you're just digging then you don't really care about the skip your next turn part anyway rushing river is one that this is a card that i remember hearing people talk about playing this again like last year basically a bounce spell that can bounce two different things it's it seems okay it's a flexible bit of interaction again the bar is a little bit lower here. Thirst for knowledge. So lots of ways to dig. Turn about. We're tapping and untapping our lands. And we already are on the ad nauseum. This might be, you know, not be the most crazy Nas deck in the world. And cards like Tide Spout Tyrant don't line up well with Nas. And like, like I, I heard Bryant even say in, in a podcast where he probably thinks that some of the more expensive stuff should get trimmed off to make this Nas better. But that's where we're at. All right. Looking at the artifact base. A lot of the most broken stuff was already printed before we even uh, played here. Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, Man Crypt, Mox, Diamond, Man of Vault, Soul Ring, Sensei's, which is more of a staple back then. And also we have ways to combo with. We're doing like Helm of Awakening. Uh, we have those future side effects, Cloud Key. So like ways to just draw through our entire deck with Sensei's. Kindle Abertanos again. If you're doing high tide stuff, it works great. And then spoiler alert, another card that was not banned yet, Larian Academy, one of the most powerful cards ever printed, unquestionably, you know, and you have all these cheap artifacts, you can dump your hand, tap and untap your Tolarian Academy, it just goes absolutely crazy. Candelabra, high tide shenanigans, it's not something you see in modern CDH, but probably would be good enough just with the unbanning of Tolarian Academy. And then of course you have like lots of other tap untap synergies here too. So cards like Memory Jar, which are part of our um, tinker package. You can kind of see, we don't really have a super unbelievably broken artifact to go grab. Tinker is just like really flexible here. Goblin Char Belcher is one of our ways to win. Do this over and over and over, potentially like tap and untap it if you get like infinite mana and get that engine going. You don't need that many cards in the library to do that. And then just medallions, card reducers, tap on tap. We're, we're doing a lot of that. We are really making lots of mana. Living Stone is an interesting one. Counterbalance. Bryant Cook playing control. Hold up. I mean, this is just powerful for the time. Taking advantage of, you know, the multiplayer format. Counterbalance gets way better. Future Sight, part of our combo package. Mind Over Matter lets us tap untap draw a thing discard you know we're doing lots of ways to uh really abuse mind over matter you'll notice no ristic study no mystic remora they hadn't figured it out yet they hadn't got it all figured out yet and that was i mean there's i've heard reports i guess that ristic study wasn't even really that popular in like 2010s 20 you know like mid teens cdh i think a lot of people just thought of it as a very casual card and too slow and at different points like maybe that's been accurate i said i mean the ability to turn one ristic study was probably just all Always been good, right? And the mana base, of course, Tolarian Academy, most crazy card in this deck. It's so insane. Bad River that so we're digging deep to uh, be able to have a flexible mana base. And you can see we're, we're way more blue than we are black because we're trying to do high tide shenanigans. Most of our good stuff, we're basically just black is supporting gives us, you know, like our win cons, our ability to tutor. There aren't that many black cards really in the list. We're basically like really hard base blue. Going as deep as Terramorph for expanse, this would be painful. I'd rather just run a basic, but I guess the ability to look for different things is nice, right? This is pre-Zendikar, so the other half of the fetch lands hadn't been printed, right? Am I crazy? Pretty sure not even all the fetch lands have been printed yet. So that kind of makes it make a little bit more sense why there's Terramorph for expanse instead of 
the all these other fetch lands. Uh, Teleria West, Utility Land. So yeah, lots of interesting card choices here. Stuff that we wouldn't see nowadays, but definitely not because of like, they just didn't know any better. Maybe beyond like Mystic Ristic, that was probably even good then, I would I would wager. But just lack of cards. There's no Jeweled Lotus. There aren't good commanders. There's no Thassa's Oracle. A lot of the win cons that we use nowadays didn't exist. Really interesting look into, and then again, when you see that, you see the Talarian Academy, the Cloud of Fairies, it starts to make a lot more sense. Really interesting to take a look back at some of the past bits of CDH. And if you have any information on like old CDH deck list and like ones I can look at to maybe either to maybe cover going forward, I'm super interested in that. So please let me know down below. What would you like to see? I think it would be interesting to look at like Flash Hulk era decks from the oldest Zer list, like really look at the format as it's forming. And I would enjoy to make this a series if I had enough of that sort of information to actually be able to accurately cover anything. So if you enjoyed this video, please let me know down below what you liked about it. What bits of uh, retro tech might you enable? What are some of your favorite oldest CDH decks? You know, what was the first one you played and the first one you saw? Um, let me know. Consider supporting me on Patreon. Consider getting some merch. But with all that being said, thank you so much for watching. And as always, go play CDH. Have a good one, everybody.